everyone. Welcome back. This is uh, our wrap-up video from Lecture 2 in Engineering 17, Section 2 uh, here at UC Davis. So today we kind of covered a bit about um, a bit from Chapter 2 of your textbook covering voltage and current sources, kind of defining how those look in the source of in the uh, schematic here. Talking about electrical resistance, again, just looking at polarities and, again, understanding how you define the current flow through a resistor in relationship to the uh, voltage across it. Uh, looked at a circuit model, kind of a real-world example, using that flashlight example to uh, ultimately develop a schematic of our own that would describe the function, the, the electrical function of a flashlight, and then looked at the process of kind of analyzing that using specifically our, our new Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws, which I'm going to highlight a bit in another example I have for you here. And then finally, we ended up on dependent sources, um, which uh, going through the same process of understanding the effect that a dependent source might have on how you would set up those uh, current and voltage relationships. So before I get into my example here, I just wanted to kind of clarify one point from the class, which was brought to my attention uh, by a couple people. Uh, thank you very much to those of you that pointed this out. But in this example problem that we were working on in class, uh, I guess I didn't really make it clear, and when I first looked at it, it wasn't immediately obvious to me, so I might have given out a bit of a wrong information. But if you look at the schematic, there's some question about what's happening right in the center uh, spot there. And it turns out the way the book has defined it is that because there's no black dot specifically there in the center, that indicates that those wires are actually not touching and they're simply overlapping one another. So therefore this allowed us then to easily identify the um, currents coming into this node C because we have a current defined in this branch which immediately flows in there and then you have the other uh, branches that are have some current flowing out of that node as well. So I apologize uh, if I confused anybody with that, but just want to clarify again if you're going back over your notes and trying to understand how that uh, supposed to look like. So that's the... All right, so I want to get into a quick example here. I, again, this is just going to be a little short um, overview to give you, again, an idea of a general strategy you might want to take when you're working on looking at schematics that might be given to you on homeworks or, or the exam, and how you might initially at least first approach that in, in coming up with these equations. So I think everybody's hopefully familiar enough with Ohm's Law, so you kind of understand you know, as, you, as we define a current or a voltage across any given element, we can easily come up with the opposite uh, current or voltage uh, relationship if we have the known resistance. But if we want to get into using our Kirchhoff voltage and current laws, we need to first, again, define um, for ourselves some reference uh, directions on the current flow as well as the voltage flow. And even if we're not, um, you know, correct per se, at least we're consistent and they'll give us a reference point from which to uh, make our equations. So the first thing you know I look at is you know number one I have a as I'm going to start with uh, recognizing currents. So right here I have a current source with a direction facing up. So I'm imagining this current flowing here, and so this is likely going to branch off. Let's I'm you know I'm es estimating. So I'm going to define a current flow here, which I'm going to say is I S one because that's going to correlate with the current that's flowing across this voltage source, which is Vs1. Then I have another current flowing down um, through this R1 resistor, so I'll, name, I'll say that is uh, I1 there. Um, so again, let's go down this way. So here we can again can define some current flow, which again I'm just going to say is in this direction. So this will be I2. Coming up here, then I can define two more currents here would be I4 to correlate with R4 there, and then up through this branch, which I'll say is I3 to correlate with that R3 there. And again, as you know, I don't really need to define anything separately for this voltage source since I know that the current flowing through this resistor is going to be the same as what's flowing uh, across that source there. Um, sorry, I need my marker. Okay. Blue marker for voltages. Uh, okay, so first, um, so here I can define a voltage across R1, but as you'll kind of recognize, whatever voltage I, I define across R1 is the same that's going to be across um, the current source. So I'm just going to, let's, I'm going to put the positive down here, 
and the minus down here. Again, I want to say that this is V1. So again, this is V1, which is, is the same across the resistor 1 here, as well as this current source IC. Um, OK, let's see. So then we have a voltage drop here, which typically I, so I, I put my positive and minuses to correlate with how the current's flowing in. So if my current's flowing in this direction, generally I like to have the positive on the right side as well. So V2 there. Uh, again, I'll say V4 over here, plus and minus. I already have voltages defined across my sources. And then I need uh, another voltage reference here. This will be V3. So I got positive one more right there. OK, so now that I've kind of defined all the voltages and the currents through each element, now I can go about the business of writing my current and voltage laws. So I'm not going to write, um, go through defining all of them, but let's just take a couple of examples to get you, again, familiar with the process. So first I need to, if it's not already been defined for me, I need to define some nodes for doing uh, Kirchhoff current laws. So let's say that's node A, and um, why not let's do this one, node B. All right. So for node A, So I'm going to say uh, my signing convention is going to be any currents that are coming in are defined as negative currents. Any currents that are going out are going to be positive currents. So I have current I2 coming in here. So I'm going to say it's minus I2. I have I4 and I3 going out. So those are going to be positive. Plus I4 plus I3 equals 0. Yeah. OK, sorry, I had a little break there. Uh, so I defined a node A. So now I'm going to do a, a equation for node B. Again, so up here I'm looking at I got this I S one that I've defined that's coming in to B. So it's going to be a, a minus in the way I'm defining things. And then I have an I three coming in, so that'll be a minus. Um, and then what's coming? out here. So I have this I4. If I loop it around, that I4 is coming in. Um, so again, at a minus. OK, so there's two um, nodes that we've gone through for uh, defining equations for Kirchhoff's current laws. Uh, again, you could define more nodes. It all really depends on you know how much information from the problem you're giving. Given, you might not necessarily have to write out every current equation that's necessary in order to find whatever the unknown is that you're specifically looking for. Um, okay, now thinking about the Kirchhoff's voltage laws, uh, again, so when you're writing these, we need to uh, be working around some given loop, okay? So easiest one for me typically is to look at, at the entire outside loop and kind of work our way around there. So again, for the way I'm going to uh, write my equations is that if I have a voltage drop I'm going to say that this is a, a negative potential. And if I have a voltage rise, such as in this case, I'm going to say that's positive. So if I start here, I work my way around. I have um, a drop, so minus Vs1. Then I have a voltage rise across this um, voltage source. So that's uh, plus Vs2. Work my way around here, I have a a voltage rise across my resistor, again, just because of the way I've defined how my voltage polarity is. So I need to say that this is a positive V4. Uh, coming around here to R2, again, I have a rise in voltage, so plus V2. Um, working all the way around here, so the voltage across my current source is V1. And it is dropping, so I'm going to say that's minus V1 equals 0. I apologize that I kind of ran together there. Probably get it from the words I'm using anyway. Um, what's another path we could take? Uh, we could take maybe this internal loop here uh, around from A to B, around this little triangle section. So again, if we're going, seeing a voltage drop across uh, the resistor R3 here, and that's V3. So I'm going to say that's minus V3. Uh, coming around here, I have a voltage rise across Vs2. So let's say that's a plus Vs2. And then finally, I have, again, a voltage rise across R4. I'm going to drop this down. V4, that equals 0. 
Uh, again, so those are just two example equations that we could write using Kirchhoff's voltage law. And uh, again, it all boils down to how much information we're given in the problem, whether or not we need to really create loops for every possible um, path that we might have. Well, at least if you've done this enough times, you kind of uh, will get a better understanding of, of when you need to do what. So I think that about covers you know, the bulk of what I want to get across from this lecture. So again, um, please complete your homework by next Tuesday, and hope to see you in class then. Stay classy. Don't let me go.